So today, what I would like to do is trying to play with this stuff here and more precisely we will sorry we will um, try to interact with these two Philips U. Do you see the Philips U over there? Right. And we in the first half of the hour and in the second half of the lecture we will play instead with the Z-Wave device. So I have here three of these uh, smart plugs and one four-in-one sensor. Four-in-one sensor. So humidity, temperature, movement, and light. And you stop to be quiet. So, so first of all, you're welcome. But it lasts two or three minutes, and then I need to <laughs> open it again. Um, first of all, let's start from Philips Hue. Mm -hmm. I would like to follow with you every single step mm -hmm. from scratch. Mm -hmm. So I have in my smartphone here the Philips Hue app, just downloaded, never opened before. So the first thing that we can do, we need to do, is to test if the Philips Hue network, the Philips Hue system, works before starting programming for that. So the lights are turned on, you, you already saw this, but we need to understand if it's if they are controllable, if there are any problem, because if there is any problem with the app, for sure you will have the same problem with your code. So it's better to try to understand if everything is set up or not. To do this, I just connected my phone to the router, the router here, that is the same, this is the same bench you have in La Dispe. Um, that, let's see it from from real, also for people uh, on YouTube. Uh, you have uh, a router here that right now is not connected to the internet. So right now I am connected to this and my smartphone is not connected to the internet. But in La Dispe you have internet over here. Then it has the Philips Hue hub that is this thing here, way bigger. That this light is because you don't have internet here, so it's light for that reason. It has a button here, this one is a button that you need to press in some occasion, and we will see where. And then we have this Raspberry. Hello? Well, this Raspberry, uh, and this small thing here is the Raspberry module that enable all the Z-Way uh, network. And on this Raspberry, that is Raspberry Model B, the one of the first Raspberry Pi, you have also the software that expose some APIs, HTTP APIs, to be connect to control the network. But let's start from Philips Hue, and then we will move on Z-Way. I will use two software uh, in Python that are already on GitHub. So we just see that code. We don't write neither of them from scratch. The first software that we will see from the Philips Hue will perform th three operations. The first operation is to turn on the lamp, all the lamp connected to this hub. So in our case, just these two. Then we'll apply a special effect that is a color loop effect so that the lamp will change color forever, let me say. And then we will start counting up to 10 seconds. And after 10 seconds, we will turn off all the lamps so that the color loop effects will stop. 
and in the code as a comment you also have an example of how to turn a lamp on in a specific color. So if you want to turn a, a lamp red, there is a, a, the instruction to do that and a link with some predefined, let me say, colors, color value. Because the color value of the Philips Hue is not a normal red, green and blue, but is a different a set of color, a combination of values. So they have a small table with basic color to be set, like red, blue, and white, and something like that. But let's start from the Philips Hue. So I'm connected to the router. So first of all, first thing is start the, the Philips Hue. I'm sorry, it's in Italian. Um, and it try to find in the wireless network the bridge. I never opened this application with this bridge. So, first time. Let me check that I'm connected to the right network, yes. So, let's try to start uh, from scratch. And you have to wait. If this search will fail, we can insert the IP address of the bridge directly in the app. But we need to, to wait that this uh, process will stop. Oh, OK. It find one Philip bridge, so I can press setup. And the first thing that it asked me is to press the button before the bar in the bottom of the screen go to zero. This is something, let me press this. So, this operation is mandatory for the bridge, for every application you would like to connect to the bridge. So either a mobile application, either the Python application, any application that needs to connect to a Philips Hue bridge need this step of manually pressing the button. This is a specification of the ZigBee Smart Lightning protocol. It's required for security feature. So why it's a security feature? Otherwise, everyone in the range of your Wi-Fi network can control your lamp in your home. So you just need to press the button physically to try to control any lights. So this is embedded in the protocol. This is something specific for ZigBee smart line lighting. Then here uh, we have where are the lamp here? Here we have uh, we can control. We have a default room. This lab because the, the bridge already saw, have already seen all the lamps before. It's not new, the bridge, just the app. So it already has every lamp associated with it and it should be able to control them. So here you can control, you can control all the lights connected to the bridge, no matter if they are connected here, obviously you see the effects only if they are powered and in the range, but together. Or you can, hopefully, control and understand which 
light is. So for example, that one, that lamps, while I'm pressing this is the Philips Hue number one, and the other is number three, and then there is another number four that probably is uh, in La Dispe. It's another lamp that is not in this, in this box. And then there is also this, uh, these other things here that is the lead strip that is associated with the bridge but is not here, so it's not reachable right now. Then I would like to control this light. Okay, so we can just turn on separately this one and you, we, can, we can also, hopefully, change its color just from the up. So let's put this white and, and also this one. And then I will turn off both of them. So it works and we can control that from this wireless network so we can move to our software. So, the software. The Python program is composed of two files. The first one is called rest.py and this is a file that you will also have in the Z-Way software, in the software that we will see next. It's uh, the same file, the same code. This is just a utility file to perform get, post, put HTTP request with a JSON, with some authorization, with some headers, and get back the response. It, it just do this thing. It allow you to perform well-formed HTTP call. So here, for example, the send method as um, the send function as a parameter that is method in which you specify if you want to perform a get, a post, a put, a URL to which perform the call, uh, any data, the request body from the post and the put, and any headers of this call, if you have. Otherwise, it's empty. And then you try with the request package, the request module that you already saw with Professor Corno as an example for the REST API server, for a client for the REST API server. So it tried to get, perform this, this get, this get to a specific cure with a specific data, if any, and with a specific header, if any, and get the request and put the request in JSON in a dictionary, in a Python dictionary. So, quite simple. Just perform this operation. And by default, the, me the method is get. By passing a, new va a string in that variable, in that parameter, you can also perform a, po a post, a put, a delete, a patch, whatever. And this is the first file. The second file is specific for the Philips Hue. So the, third, the second uh, script well, will import rest and import time for counting up to 10 because we need to turn on that, wait 10 seconds and then turn off. And it has some parameter. So the first variable is the URL of the bridge. So the bridge is, if you connect to this router, the bridge is available at the address 192.168.0.201. So, and let, let's see, we have seen this in the, in the player, but if I, the after, if I connect to that wireless network, 
um, we will can also open our browser and see that there is some basic information there about the Philips Hue bridge. Um, as as already so to you, the the Philips U also have an emulator that is downloadable from the internet, made in Java, and typically the emulator has the uh, this address, so localhost your computer on the port 8000. So here there is also an example how to use the emulator. Then the second variable is a username. For the emulator is simple, is new developer, is always new developer. For the real stuff, the username is specific for the application. And it's generated when I press the button on the bridge. So when my application connected to the bridge and I press the button, the bridge give, gave a string like this, a username like this in the app. And the app is authorized from that moment on to use that bridge. It's the electronic equivalent of pressing the button to avoid pressing the button next time. Obviously, this doesn't work right now. It's, uh, we can say, fake username. We need to generate one of them. And if you need to use the Philips U, the first thing you need to have is this, with the real Philips U, is this username. So let's try from this, from this username. Let's start to get this username. So, the Philips U has a, a developer guide hmm, at the address developer.meetu.com in which they have a getting started guide that explain that you need to, to test if your network works correctly. Maybe you open the app and turn on the lamp just to verify that everything is fine. And then Step three, you have to go to this address, HTTP, the IP address of the bridge, slash debug, slash clip, where you can find a web page like this. This is the, the clip API debugger to test the Philips U API from a browser. So you insert the URL, a possible message body and then you see a response here and you can perform a get, put, post and delete and try to understand if everything work. And here it explained how to get the username. So we need to perform all this step to get a username like this. Then we can copy and paste this from the web browser into our application. And from that moment on, we can connect to the um, Philips U bridge with this username. So let's try to follow this. Obviously here you also have the full documentation of the API in Philips U API. And then you need to press login because the Philips U API are not available on the internet for the public. You just have to log in to sign up and log in. It's free, but you have to create an account to see the, the documentation. Mm. Uh, so we have an account, obviously. Um. So after you can log in and then you can say that, for example, to get all the lights, you have to perform a, uh, a get at the address, IP address of the bridge, slash API, slash username, that username that we need to get, slash lights. And that will give us a JSON like this, with all the lamps connected to the bridge with their status, Notice that they say that a lamp is off when its on state is false and a lamp is on when the on state is true. It has some other value, the brightness, 
the U, the saturation, any possible effect that are applied to that lamp, typically none, we will change for 10 seconds the, the, this variable to color loop. And then this couple of element that describe the specific color of the, of the lamp, of the single lamp. And then some alert and if it's reachable, like in the app or not. And then, well, other details like the software update, they received the, the type, the extended color light is something like this, a lamp that is, uh, can be colored, and they also have the lamp only white. The name, like in the app, uh, model ID, manufacturer, and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. The same information for every lamp that is connected to the bridge. In this case, two, only two, in our case, four. And then we need to get everything, but it will work only with this two lamp here. So there is an API to get new light, to search for new light, like the, the app, uh, to get specific attribute, to change color, to change state, and so on. A lot of API. We will, in the example in Python, we are using directly this API. So in the code, you may see that, for example, for getting all the lights here, you call with a get the lights URL that is base URL, the URL of the bridge, slash API, slash username, slash lights, like this, exactly like this. So we are just using this API. So get back to the getting started guide. So the first thing that we need to do is going to this address. So 192.168.0.201 slash debug slash clip. Yes, obviously it doesn't work. I need to change wireless connection, so I'm losing internet. Okay. So here we have the interface, this clip API debugger interface. So we need to, to get the username, we need to, first of all, send a GET request to this API slash new developer address. So let's do this. So notice that this new developer is the same username that the emulator uses. It's just a default uh, username that three years ago was also the default working username on the Philips Hue Hub. Right now, it doesn't work, but we can just try. So get, it say, okay, error, because you are unauthorized. You, you need the username. You, ha you haven't pressed the button. So next step, we need to register my specific application. Mm -hmm. To register the application, the software application, we have to perform a post to that address with this body. Device type, the device type is typically composed of two uh, items. The first one is the name of the app, and the second one is the device, mm -hmm. the physical device in which the app is running. So in, in in my case, in my smartphone, it will probably uh, set something like default UAP or official UAP. And here, the, the username of my smartphone, the name of my smartphone. Because otherwise, you will have, uh, in every, if you connect from your smartphone, you will also only have uh, official UAP for everybody. So it's, it's not scalable, and so they also add the name of the smartphone and some other 
uh, things mm, to do better this work. But basically, the name of the app and the name of the device. So let let me co copy and paste this. So here we need to perform a call to just API with message body. Uh, let's call it in class and this this my device right now so we need to perform a post here notice that the expected response of this is link button not pressed because we need to, to press the button and the instructions say go and press the button after seeing this in a short time otherwise you you need to redo this operation and then you have after pressing the button perform the same post and you will hopefully get the username so let's try it's a post right so post link button not pressed i press the button and send another post okay and here we have the username with this username my application every application that see this username on youtube and would like to be here can connect to this bridge obviously you can also delete this username that's something that i will do <laughs> to, to the, tomorrow and <laughs> because otherwise everyone with this will connect to your bridge and perform any operation without press the, the need to be nearby your bridge. So let me copy and paste this and I will just replace the username with the new username. Then the configuration part is over and let's see what the code is doing. So the first thing that we are doing is get all the light all the lamps in this case we will get all the four lamps that are connected to the bridge obviously we can then con control only these two because the other two are not reachable then in this dictionary that is called all the light we iterate on the dictionary we get one light for each time and for each light we will call uh, we will perform a put to the address lights url so this here plus the name the number of the light light number one two three and four and state so to change uh, the status of a lamp you have to perform a put on the state element of the URL with a body that is composed by at least one element here we have two of them for example if we just need to turn on the lamp we can just pass in the body on uh, true just to say turn on if you want to turn on and change color you can say on to u0 uh, that is red and here there is a link to see uh, more colors and maybe also some effects that you would like to, to to have in this lamp so in this case we will turn on all the lamp one one for for each lamp we will turn on uh, one for time and then we will apply the color loop effect notice that here in the call we will have a put the url the body the request body in json and as header the content type that is application json because we are passing in the body of the request a json so we need to to set the headers uh, appropriately then as i told you we wait 10 seconds with this 4e in range 0 10 times leap 1 and then we also print a countdown from 10 to 0 
and we wait more or less 10 seconds in this way. After this 10 seconds, in which the lamp will change color continuously, we will perform the same call as before, without, a, um, sorry, the same call as before. The, the only change is that the body right now is only on false because we want to turn off everything. So we don't need to set a color, we don't need to obviously set an effect, just turn off the lamp. Uh, the same call as before. Uh, otherwise, if there are any error and problem, we just print the error on screen. Maybe because we put a wrong username, a wrong URL, a wrong method, everything that may happen will print hopefully an error. So let's try this. Sorry for the lights. So I will run this. They will start and they will, <clears throat> so you see here, 10 seconds. They will change color very slowly. Let's try again. They start this color loop effect from the color they have last time. So we, have, we set up a white color, maybe it was not a really good idea, but maybe we change that. Yeah, it's better if you, they change color, but they remain on the white side of things. So let me just <coughs> set up another color like red and uh, blue, blue, we broke the lamp, yeah. And blue, perfect. Ah, and let me turn off this. Okay. So let's try again. So notice that the blue changes, also this one. It's green one and the other orange, and they slowly change color, and then 10 seconds after 10 seconds, they will turn off. If you remove the countdown, they will change color forever, basically. Slowly, but they change color forever. So this is the first example that I would like to, to show today. So it is basically how to interact with the Philips Hue. Because the Philips Hue can be turned on and off, and we, did the, we do this, and uh, apply some effects the main effect is this color loop. We can also try live here, just to maybe um, try with apply the red. Let's try this. So we can we we can change color, just red. So let's try this. We need to turn on and change color. So basically they turn on red and stay red for 10 seconds. Notice that we change only the U of the lamp, not the brightness, not the saturation of the color. So if they are really, really bright, they will remain bright and red. With the U parameter, you don't change the brightness nor the saturation of the uh, lamp. And here at this address, yeah. at this address, you
you will find a small table with just some color, the, the two reds, a uh, violet, a green, a uh, yellow, and the blue. These are the U value for these six colors. And there is also all the explanation about how they get the real hue, saturation, and brightness with just uh, X and Y coordinates using this. OK, so this is uh, the Philips U. So let's change technology and let's change uh, project. So let's close this and let's open Python Z way. So Python Z-Wave as, let's see the code and then we will see the, the software like before, as um, again, um, a script that is called the rest that has the same, more or less, sorry, the same uh, uh, function. Mm -hmm. the, ch the only change is that here you have this author authorization parameter, an additional parameter that is authorization. Because for the um, Z-Way, in this hardware configuration and in the protocol, you don't have to press anything. You don't have a button to be pressed. So you need to be authorized in some way. And the way is by providing a username and a password, basically, to each call, API call that you will do. And then everything else is the same. It just perform some requests with get, post, put, uh, delete, whatever, with he headers, data, URL, like before, and it will take the result in, in JSON and will put it automatically in a dictionary, a Python dictionary. And then the code here imports rest and time like before. Uh, the code here is quite terrible. I, I apologize. Um, it, it's really terrible. I, I would like to rewrite from scratch yesterday, but I, I say no. Uh, it, <laughs> sorry, too much work just for, for a couple of examples and for, for your project that you will probably need to take just two or three small pieces of this there are also a lot of comments, uh, for example, the how to get the call with the authorization and without the, authorization, the authentication phase because the authentication phase could be mm, disabled on the, on the Raspberry Pi, on the, on the software. And it's, it's, it's also terrible because they have a really insane URL, but well, well nothing. Um, it's not a RESTful API. It's an HTTP API, let's say this. Um, but we, we just have this and we, we need to, to work with this. This API is, um, so while uh, the Philips API is well documented, you have examples, you have uh, this debugger, clip and whatever, and is a REST API, uh, this is, you have just nothing. I, I spent yesterday one hour in more or less this time because we, ha we have this, soft, this script from two or three years and it worked always. Uh, I just added uh, something like how to get data from a sensor because the, the original version of this just turned on and off the lamp. So the, the, the original version of this is the equivalent of the Philips U. So in the Philips U, we will turn on a lamp, then wait 10 seconds and then turn off, and this did the same thing. Turn on all the plugs, wait 10 seconds, and then turn it off. But it's, wait, there is, it's a different way 
there is a different implementation, different way, different code for get data from the sensor. And the documentation of this is, is, is not a documentation, let me say it in this way. Um, so we, we just need to, to go over this. So I, I modified that, I, went, I tried that yesterday, it doesn't work. Uh, so I, I say, well, maybe it's the username and the password, they need a session, I did whatever. And then I noticed that they, the, the original URL was this, with run, with this not capital R, and it doesn't work, with a error message, something like bad request. And right now it has the capital R in run, and in this way, works but you you I spend one hour for this letter but again okay um, it's a very very uh, a great piece of software both that one that run here and this one they are probably equivalent uh, as for the quality um, but again stop it um, so the, the software is structured more or less like the Philips Hue one. So at the beginning, we have the URL of the device. So while the Philips Hue bridge is at the 201 address, this one is 202. Easy. It has a port that is 8083. So it, uh, it has a username and password that is not admin admin. Yeah, the username is admin, the password no. And then it has a series of uh, call. What this code do is get all the device hmm, associated to this controller, like for the Philips Hue. Then for each um, plugs, it will turn on the plugs. For each sensor, like the four in one, it will get the temperature and the motion because they are two different type of uh, data. The temperature is a continuous data uh, because it increase and decrease. Um, the other, the motion is a binary data because or there is motion or not and they are coded in a different way, both in that way, in the protocol, and in the API. Then after doing this, it wait 10 seconds, like before, and this is also the other reason why it didn't change the code, because they are structured in the same identical way as the Philips Hue code. They are the same logical structure. It wait 10 seconds, and then it turn off all the plugs. Obviously, the sensor could not be turned off. And we just need to get data from the sensor. So, uh, this is the base URL for performing uh, almost all the query, all the calls. So, you have the base URL that is the IP address on the port 8083. Then you have Z-Wave API slash run slash devices, a number, in parentheses, instances, another number, common classes, another number. So the Z-Wave protocol is structured in this way. Every device has an ID. It is quite obvious. It's an ID that is incremental. So the first device you added, you add on the uh, Z-Way server, that is the software that is together with the Raspberry module that runs on the Raspberry Pi. So every device has an ID that is incremental. The first device has ID number two, because the, the device number one is the controller, and so on. And you can add device or remove device. And when you remove a device and you add an, another new device, the, the ID number is not replaced. So if you remove device number two and you have the device number three and then add another device, it will get device number four. 
and device number two is not existent anymore. So every device has a, a ID. Every device may have an instances because a device could perform more than one operation. So for example, the sensor is a four in one. So it may have up to four instances, one for each capability. It may have. And then each instance have for sure a common class. A common class specify the feature of that device. Each device in that way is a set of common classes. The controller has all the common classes because they need to, to know, to understand all the common classes. The sensor here has two common classes. A sensor, uh, a multi-level, what's called? Multi-level uh, sensor for temperature, humidity, and light, luminosity. Multi-level because it's a continuous value. And a binary sensor, command class, for the motion, because the motion only has two states. The plugs here are switch binary as a common class that is switch binary because they can be switched all in two states, binary, on and off. And if this, for example, will also uh, get the power of the device that is attached, it will also have a multi-level uh, sensor because the, the power, the electrical power, is a continuous value. So a device is just a set of common classes. So the Z-Wave network is a proprietary network. We don't know many, many details of the protocol. Instead, ZigBee is open, so you can just understand everything. We here doesn't know many details, just some information that are exposed through APIs or something like that. Um, it's typically less, uh, sometimes it doesn't work very well, let me say in this way, but it's not Z-Wave protocol, the, the Raspberry module and the software. So while this lamp are not connected to this bridge for a year and you see, I just opened the app and controlled the lamps immediately. Uh, I need to reset, yesterday, to control these three, these four elements, I just need to reset the, the, the controller, uh, remove the association of everything and just put back everything because it doesn't work. The controller doesn't see the, the plug anymore. So it's important that the plug will remain for example, always connected uh, to the power and in LADISP they are. And also the sensor, it's important they also be um, uh, powered or via USB, like in this case, or with some battery. But let's stop. speaking bad of this device and let's open. So it has an IP address uh, 68.0.0.2.80.83. .0 .0 .0 80, so it has, uh, the good news, in the end, it, uh, that it has, um, hopefully, a user interface, a web user interface, so you don't need an, uh, an application. And this is the same log username and password that you need to use in the code. The login is admin and the password is MEI minus Z-Wave all together. If you need it in the lab, uh, we can provide you in any moment. So you can log in here. And it has a lot of parameter, a lot of things. I just go straight to a expert user interface just to, to see uh, data about this device. So here you see that we have 
this one, the first one, is the controller itself. And then we have four devices. Notice that device number two is missing for, for the reason that I told you before. I just removed the device and because it doesn't work and I added it again and it took the number six. And we have three plugs and the sensor. So device number three is a binary power switch, so it's a plug. It's active and has these common classes here. As the basic common class, every device has the basic common class. It's specified that uh, it's a, a Z-Way device, like the version common class and the association common class. Then it has, in this case, other five common classes. One is manufacturer specific, anything that the manufacturer could add to the device. Then there is the configuration common class, quite typical common class for all the device to be configured some parameter of the device. A meter common class, because this plug here is also a meter, a power and energy meter. And then it has the switch all and switch binary common class, that is the common class I told you before to turn on the lamp, the lamp, the, the plug in a binary way on and off. And if we press this, we see the detail. So for example, uh, this common class, uh, the version or whatever, and the level that is false because the, com the, the plug is turned off. The level true is the plug, the plug uh, turned on. Same thing for this other plug that is, no, this is not the plug. For this other plug here that is turned off, uh, don't see the, the date because it, it loses the, the, the current date. It starts from January. I don't know why. Yesterday I set up the date, but today we are in January. Um, at uh, 2 in the morning. And this is another, uh, this is the third one, the third plug that is everything's off. And then there is the, this one, that is the sensor. And you see here the basic common class, the configuration, manufacturer specific, association and version common class, like before, the sensor binary common class that is for the motion. And notice that here you have a sensor type, it is general purpose, that is a way to say the motion sensor, and the level that is true, so it was triggered, probably, it sends something. And the sensor multilevel that has uh, the first one, the temperature, that is 24 uh, degree Celsius, so it also have the scale, the unit of measure. The second one is the luminosity in lux, and this 22. The third one is humidity, that is 22%. So all this information here, the API just take this parameter, val, scale, string, and so on. We will see this exact name also in the code. And then, then nothing. Um, but let's try if this work and then let's spend another couple of minutes on that way. So here you have a control. So let's try to update all. And let's try to turn all on. Okay, they turned on maybe a certain point also here, we will see. But if we just, so notice that, you can notice that the light on the, the plugs are, is on, because the light, the, the plug is on. If we turn off everything, so notice that the light are, sorry, 
notice that the light are not off. So this is also the, the indicator that is the, the plug is turned on and off. And if you are here, you also uh, listen a click. That is the, the switch that turn on and off. And the user interface uh, decided not to, okay, be updated. And you can update the value, you can turn on and off the, the single lamps. And here you can also have a sensor and see that, for example, one of these plugs, no, all these three plugs uh, has a power meter hmm, that measure nothing because nothing is uh, attached. And uh, the sensor is triggered, this one, uh, and it sends 24 degree, 22% of humidity and 22 of luminosity. So they, they work, but let's see a two feature of this device. The first feature is that, notice this is the sensor, notice that the sensor has a battery and a wake up command class, while the plugs, the plugs doesn't have these common class, common classes. Why? Why the plugs doesn't have a battery common class? They are always powered. So this sensor could be powered by some four battery or via USB. So via USB, they are always, it is always powered. And so the battery common class is not used. And the wake up, this is a feature of the Z-Way protocol. Uh, the devices that are not powered or they are not expected to be powered, like the sensor, it goes sleeping after a certain amount of time. It is sleep. They don't, don't communicate anymore with the uh, controller. They just wake up sometime and say, do you have an update for me? Please send the update and this is my data. I will send you your, my data. This doesn't happen with the plugs, just with the uh, not uh, powered device like the sensor. This is to be noticed because in some cases it's configurable. The wake up time, yeah. You can just change this wake up time to have devices that wake up more frequently. And this is here because otherwise a battery in, uh, in your home, you will change them every week because if they doesn't sleep and they are not connected to the to the power they will consume so we need to change everything to, to get that working so they go to sleep because typically temperature doesn't change every second temperature change slowly humidity change slowly uh, luminosity doesn't change very quickly, typically in a room. Motion, motion could change quite frequently and this could be a special problem for motion if you need to detect motion. And then it has other parameter um, like, uh, for example, uh, how much it, it must remain in the, I found a movement state because you can trigger the sensor and it will remain the triggered state for three minutes, maybe. And even if nothing happens or just say, no, it's triggered one second and then it go back to not triggered. It depends from the application. How to instead 
uh, add new devices to the Z-Way controller. Because this is the one that is in the display, but many of you uh, will get a Raspberry Pi, a Raspberry from Ladispe or from me, and some sensor, and they need to uh, connect a sensor with the controller. So for the Philips U, it's easy. There is the nap, and ju you just put the bridge in listening mode, and every lamp that is in the range will get added, basically. Here, it's similar, uh, but you need to explicitly have a perform a command. So in the network, in control, in this expert mode, there are device management and two buttons. One is start inclusion, and the other one is start exclusion. So if you press start inclusion, the, device, the, the controller is put in a ready to include mode. So if you have a new device to be included, and you press three times quickly the button on the device, every device has a button somewhere, it will add the device to the list of a controllable device. Similarly, if in the start exclusion, it will start the same process, ready to exclude, and you can remove device from the network. Notice that, in some cases, your device will not be included. It will just stop the inclusion process with controller is normal mode. This typically happens when the device was included in another or in a previous network. So let's imagine that I have this plug here and that, I, that is included here with this controller, and that can borrow this to a group. So this plug is linked to this hardware uh, board, to this Z-Wave network. And each device could be only in one network per time. So if you go home with your Raspberry module and start the inclusion of this, you will fail. You will never be able to include this one. So how to solve this? You have to exclude the device from your network. Because in reality, this start exclusion process, it will not only exclude device from your network, but it will, it's also able to exclude the device from other network. Because the device know in which network is it attached. So if you start the exclusion of a device, power device, by pressing three times the button, the button here, or multiple times to be sure, it will be excluded from a foreign network, not yours from this one, and then you can stop the exclusion, start the inclusion, and include finally in your network and have the device working. So if a device not new will not include in your uh, network, first thing to do is trying to exclude that from a foreign network and then include back in your, um, in your device, in your network. Uh, here you can also, for example, reset the API or delete everything on the controller. So this command will delete every device associated with this controller from the controller point of view, the device uh, will think to be connected, to be in the network generated from that controller. So if you need to re-include that here, you just need to exclude again the device before including. But we don't press the button, so. So this is Z-Way protocol in half an hour, uh, 15 minutes. But 15 minutes better. Um, so back to the code. So here we need to put the, the password, otherwise it doesn't work. So first thing we get all the devices like before. All the devices are not get from this address, but from a totally different address that is zwave API slash data slash zero. Uh, 
with an authorization header, uh, username and password. That is the, the username and password. This will get will give you a, a Python dictionary with a list of every device, included the controller, the device number one. That typically you are not interested in because you cannot do a lot of things with that. You can start the inclusion process from code, but if you need to get some data, they are, they, it is quite useful, useless. So the first thing I, I did it here is, first of all, uh, remove um, uh, an element, a father element of this device, because it's basically useless uh, for, for everything else. So I just don't save that in a variable. And then I remove the first device, that is the controller. So that here in this for loop, I just don't see the device, the controller device, because we don't want to turn on the, the controller and we don't want to get some information in this example from the controller. Then we have this URL that I already show you. And here we have the value, the numeric value of three common classes. The switch binary, that is the common class of the plug on and off. The sensor binary, that is the common class for the motion sensor or for every sensor that has two states like the motion, and the sensor multi, the multi-sensor, the multi-level sensor, that is a common class for every continuous element, temperature, humidity, luminosity, whatever. Then this code uh, iterate on all devices, get all the instances in these devices, because we are interested in getting all the capability from the devices. So another four here. Then it tried to, to understand which common class that device has. So if it's a switch binary, a plug, we just create a, and we want to turn on the plug it will just prepare a URL that is the URL you see uh, above, the, the very long URL, plus set 255. So to turn on something, you set 255 on the device, on the common class. This is equivalent to say on. And then send a get request to that address here that this long address here, plus uh, point set 255 uh, with the username and password. And this is to turn on uh, an object. To turn off the uh, switch binary, you don't pass uh, 255, but you pass zero. Set zero, turn off. Then it look if the device is instead a sensor multi. Notice that we are not using here a leaf, but just if. Because a device could be a sensor multi and a sensor binary, and maybe some device, imaginary device, a, a switch binary. So a device could have more common classes multiple common classes. So we cannot say if it's one common class, for sure, we don't need to consider the other one. Uh, so if it's a switch by, it has the common class switch binary, do this. If it has a sensor multi common class, uh, get, uh, send a request. The request is sent to this address without addition and uh, it print the device number is a sensor multilevel, and then it get the response, and in the response it get in this case a temperature. This structure, data, uh, numbers, a string, val, value, is the structure to get the value, the numeric value of this sensor, where one is for temperature, three 
is for luminosity and five is for humidity. These are the same numbers that we have seen in the user interface. When we pressed on the common classes, when we press on the common class of the sensor, uh, sensor multilevel, we had one temperature, three luminosity, five humidity. These are the same number. So you, you need to get this number from here. They are quite standard for these three values, obviously, but maybe you, you need some other type of, um, of value. I, I was thinking to the 16-in-1 devices mm, that we have. So we get the value, we get the unit of measure. Mm. Notice again that one is for temperature and we just print the temperature is value plus unit of measure. Value is not a string, we need to convert it in a string. A unit of measure instead is already a string. And then we do the same thing for the sensor binary. Um, the sensor binary is, it has only one element that is number one because or it's on or it's off or true or false. And we just print motion, the value. It doesn't have a unit of measure. Then we wait 10 seconds like before and we just get again all the, we iterate on all the device and we put a set zero on all the plugs, on the, all the devices with a switch binary command class. And we perform another get. So notice here that we basically only have get request. No put, no post, just get to this very complex, very long uh, address. So let's try if this work. Let me say yes. So um, so trust me that everything is turned on. Uh, so you say that here temperature is 24, motion is true, and uh, device four, like before, is a sensor multilevel, and then it turned off everything. Um, I will run it again with this, uh, with the camera on, and then I will switch to the. So notice that they are turned on. Then after ten seconds, more or less, they will be turned off. Okay, so. And here you see the same thing as before. The list of devices with the operation and uh, the countdown and then it turn off device number three, five and six. That are these three devices here. If we have a device number seven that is a switch binary, it will try to turn on and off, but obviously it's not here, it's not connected, so it will not be able. So. This close uh, this part of uh, interacting with Philips Hue and Z-Wave. Uh, I have a message from, for you from Ladispe. Mm -hmm. uh, that I, I will bring back this to the Ladispe tomorrow in the morning after deleting the username for the Philips Hue bridge. And uh, uh, the technicians say that the group that already have a list of material there and need to get the material from the Ladispe can go there starting tomorrow late in the morning. So I just need to put this back in the Ladispe and then you can go there late in the morning and get the material. If your group didn't have a list of material that is already in the hand of the technician of the Ladispe, please prepare a list of material to be borrowed from the Ladispe and go there and give the list of material to the technician of Ladispe so that they can prepare everything and warn you when everything is ready. So this closed the lecture uh, almost in time. And so have a good night. <laughs>